Um, yeah, so teams are trying to get it together over there in the East to combat the Celtics. Uh, you got the 76ers. Yep. They just signed Paul George, the big fish of free agency, and they re-signed Maxie. Uh, the Knicks reunited yep. that 2016 NCAA championship with Lenovo team, and they held on to OG. Yep. Uh, Milwaukee yep. should be finally getting healthy, but Boston already has everybody locked up. So who do you think did the best job of closing that gap on the Celtics in the East? What's your end? I mean, so Milwaukee didn't do anything, so they're not really eligible no. for it. Miami um, hasn't done anything. And I know you are you feel Boston is still probably head and shoulders above, but who do you think right now the Knicks or the Sixers have the best claim for biggest contender for Boston? Between those two, I'd give it to the Knicks. I don't really wow. have too much faith in the 76ers. The Paul George thing doesn't really move me that much. Um, wow. I don't know if Joel Embiid is going to be healthy come like next postseason. Um, I just sure. don't. The, okay, so here's the, the Knicks, I think here's the reason shot. my answer would be the Sixers. It fi- I get what the Knicks are doing, and I love what they've done. Adding bridges, going all in on chemistry, trying to have a legitimate five-person, five-man starting lineup where everyone is a threat, a la what the Celtics did, being excellent defensively, having OG and Mikhail Bridges as your wing defenders is going to put teams in hell, okay? So I really like what the Knicks have done. However, it feels a bit to me like, all right, I get it. You are duplicating what the Celtics did, but you're doing it with just slightly worse players. That, to me, is not a great path. Now, Jalen Brunson might be the best player on either team. Might be. I'm not saying he's definitively better than Brown and Tatum, but he might be. But if you just go through the rest of it, the Celtics, when Chris Stapps comes back from the surgery, he's at center, and the Knicks now have Mitchell Robinson. Your wings are McHale and OG. Their wings are Tatum and Brown. Your, you know, your backcourt, again, give it to Brunson, but against Drew, if that, that's what you want to do. But then Derek White against Josh Hart or Dante goes to the Celtics. That, to me, is not the cleanest path, but I love what the Knicks have done. The Sixers, on the other hand, are going... More traditional in the, you know, kind of modern NBA, which is uh, three stars and, importantly, three stars who have very distinct roles. Athletic, point guard, do-it-all wing, dominant big. It's not three stars where there's a ton of redundancy to it. It's a, it's a point guard, a wing, and a big. And Daryl will be able to fill out the rest of the roster. So my answer would be Philly, but my answer, yes, of course, if Embiid's hurt again, then it it all goes by the wayside. The hope is twofold, Demonze. One is, with Paul George there, when Embiid suffers his inevitable regular season ding, you can give him more time to recover and the team doesn't fall off a cliff because you have Maxie and Paul George. That's first point. Second point is this, and this is where I want your take on it. Maxi averaged 30 a game in the playoffs this year. I think in order for the Sixers to reach their full postseason potential, Maxi's got to be the postseason closer. I think that Maxi has to be the guy. The ball is in his hands. He's out there making the decisions. Because Paul George is going to float and knock down threes, play good defense. Embiid is going to have some monster nights, but then also some nights where he looks a little shaken. Maxi is not scared. So I think for the Sixers, it's actually about Maxi getting to that level we saw him scratching the surface of in the postseason. That's why I like them this year. Your thoughts on that before I say one other Embiid thing. Yeah, I'd say that's I'd say that's fair. Um, I don't want to say like the torch is Maxi's because he's obviously got to share the ball, but I do trust the ball in uh, Maxi's hand at the end of games the yeah. most. Um, yeah, and no, that's 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 true. I'm gonna so and I'm gonna add one other thing about Embiid. Embiid shouldn't be playing in the Olympics. 
I, it's, he's right now the plan is he's going to, I, I think that is foolish. I think if there's anybody who needs less wear and tear and more recovery time, it's Embiid. And if I were the Sixers, I would just be holding my breath the entire Olympic run if Embiid is in fact playing. All right. What are some follow-ups? Do you see any other teams in the East climbing, uh, climbing up to that top tier? Uh, right now, I mean, listen, I don't think we can discount the Bucks. I think the Bucks have to be included in that tier because of Giannis. And Doc Rivers, I, I this kind of got under, I don't want to say it went under the radar because he said it on Bill Simmons' podcast, and Bill's got the biggest sports podcast in the world, but it didn't get a ton of pickup. Doc said, and I don't, I, by the way, I don't think Doc should have said this. I thought it was kind of shitty, but Doc said that when he got to Milwaukee, Dame told him that he was oh. the most out of shape he had ever been coming into a year because Dame was afraid to get injured while working out waiting for the trade. Okay. So I don't think that was very nice to Dame to share publicly. With that said, that is oddly the reason for optimism for the Bucks, which is because Dame didn't look like the same player. The hope is, oh, Dame was just out of shape. And Dame never was, you know, and that there is a bit of a Dame revenge season component. Plus Giannis trying to remind everyone who he is, and in fairness to Giannis, back-to-back postseasons when Giannis hasn't been healthy. Uh, so to me, they're on that top tier as well. But no, Miami's not doing anything. Cleveland, they just re-signed Donovan Mitchell. By the way, I, I kind of have a feeling on how that's going to go. Donovan got his money from Cleveland, three-year, $150 million extension. It's like, oh, okay, he's not going to demand a trade. Well, maybe in a year. Go. That's the, the new NBA free agency is get your contract extension and then demand a trade in a year anyway. I could see that happening. And the Magic, while I do like the addition of KCP, the Magic are not, to me, of that caliber uh, at the moment. All right, last follow-up here before do we you get to Clay Thompson. Do you think that Paul George made a mistake going from one injured co-star to another? Well, I just don't think he had a lot of options. I, I get the, you know, Kawhi's never healthy and now you have Embiid to deal with. But as far as teams, cap space contending teams that could give him the max, it was just Philly. And so it's a risk, but it's a risk that to me, if I were him, I think they're in better shape than the Clippers for sure. So it made sense. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.